All right, let's get started on our force homework. Centimeters, which are a measure of distance, are to inches, which are also a measure of distance, as blank are to pounds. Well, pounds measure force, so what is the metric method for measuring that? That would be newtons. All right. My dog Bentley weighs 110 pounds. Let's convert this to newtons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 110 pounds. I'm going to put pounds in the basement. One pound equals 4.5 newtons. And let's see what happens because the pounds will cancel out. And I'll be left with newtons. Let's see, that's going to be... Hang on, I can't do it in my head, darn it. And that would be 495 newtons. Can you believe my dog weighs that much? He is a big boy. All right, at terminal velocity, what happens is the upward force of friction, uh, friction equals the downward force of gravity. Now when the two forces are equal to each other, the object starts stops accelerating. And the reason is because the net force equals zero. All right. So the upward force of friction equals the downward force of gravity. The object starts stops accelerating. We call that terminal velocity. Now what is the typical terminal velocity for a human being in meters per second? It's around 60 meters per second. It can vary quite a bit depending on your body orientation and clothing, but 60 is generally considered to be about what is typical for a human being. And don't forget, Vesna survived hitting the ground at that speed. In which direction does friction always act? It always acts against motion. So if something is moving to the right, it will operate to the left. If something is falling down, it will push up. Now, let's see what we have here. A person is falling at 45 meters per second when the parachute opens. Now, if the person weighs, I'm going to draw a picture of this here. Let me make this a little bit bigger here. Okay, so let's draw the picture here. All right, we've got a person who's falling downwards. And the person weighs, I'll draw a downwards arrow because that's the direction of the gravitational force vector. 750 newtons. I'll make my 7 a little bit better. That's a terrible 7. Darn it. Okay. And the parachute produces 1,000 newtons of friction force. Remember, friction always acts against the motion of, of the direction of motion. So since the direction of motion is downwards, uh, friction is going to act upwards. So I have an upward force of friction, which is 1,000 newtons. And the question is, what is the net force on the person? Well, it's going to be uh, negative 250 newtons. And the negative means that it's pushing in the opposite direction. What effect does this force have on the parachute's mo person's motion? It slows them down. Slows down. Why does a larger parachute cause you to fall faster than a, uh, a slower than a, a small one? Because, I'll just say, larger equals more friction force. And the greater the force, the greater the upward, you know, I'm going to draw a little arrow here, the greater the upward force applied. Let's see what we got next here. Let's see. Oh. A rocket weighs 65,000 newtons. The engines produce 68. Will it get off the ground? And the answer is yes. And the reason is the net force on the rocket is going to be 68,000 upwards minus 65,000 downwards. Uh, and since the upward force is greater than downwards, the net force is going to be 3,000 newtons upwards. Now let's get our next one. The object is shown is moving this away at 25 meters per second in a uh, direction 
indicated by letter D. Now, A, B, and C are all forces. Each one of them is applying a thousand newtons. So number nine says, what type of acceleration would produce if the object was subjected only to force B? So force B is acting this way against the motion of the object. So what's going to happen, therefore, is we're going to get a negative acceleration. It's going to slow it down, stop it, and turn it around. What type of acceleration would be uh, produced if it was subjected only to C? Since C is acting at an angle to this, it's going to produce an angular acceleration and make it go in a different direction. So an angular acceleration. What type of acceleration would be produced if it was subjected only to force A? Well, since A is oriented in the same direction as this motion, it's going to cause a positive acceleration, making it go faster. And let's get our last one in here. What would happen if it was acted upon by both A and B? Well, since they're both a thousand newtons and oriented in opposite directions, they cancel each other out. So it's a, so the net force is zero, so therefore it will continue moving at the same speed. So the answer would be no acceleration. Let's go do the other side of your homework. Alright, well what we want to do here is we want to uh, uh, figure out what is the net force acting on the rocket. So we have three forces. We have thrust. So thrust is acting in an upwards direction. Weight is always acting in a downward direction. And friction always acts against motion. And since the rocket is moving upwards, uh, that friction force will be pointed downwards. So therefore, what we've got to find the net force, we're just going to say 1248 newtons minus 1120 newtons minus 350 and the minus just basically means pointing in the opposite direction and that gives us negative 222 newtons in other words uh, the rocket is moving upwards but the net force is downwards so first of all let's just say uh, 222 newtons and we'll say down I'll use an arrow. Is the rocket speeding up or slowing down? Well, since it's moving upwards and the net force is downwards, it is going to be slowing down, which is not a good thing for a rocket if you're trying to get out into outer space. It is slowing down. Well, let's try the next one. Now we've got the same thing, except this time what we've got is the thrust is oriented in a downwards direction, and so is the weight. Friction always acts against motion, so friction is pushing up in this case. So if I want to know the net force, now what I'm going to say is 1248 plus 1120 minus 350. Now, and I could have reversed these signs, but I just started with this direction of motion. Let's see what we get here. So when I uh, figure this all out, what I end up with is a net force of 2018 uh, two, two, newtons. And the direction in this case is downwards. I'll just write down. Now, is the rocket speeding up or slowing down? Well, let's think about it. Right now, the rocket is moving in a downward direction, and the uh, net force is in the downward direction, so it is speeding up. Of course, it's speeding up towards the planet's surface, but that wasn't the question. It is speeding up because the, the motion, the velocity vector, and the force vector are both pointing in the same direction. Now this, oh. now this looks interesting. Oh yeah, now in this case it's moving uh, parallel to the Earth's surface. So in this case, uh, what we've got is the thrust is oriented this way. The friction, I'm going to skip down here, is always going the opposite way to its motion. And the weight is oriented at a right angle to the thrust. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to add them all up using this graph paper here. 
So what I'm going to do is, first I'm going to draw the thrust vector, and I'm going to make it equal to 8. So I'm going to start here, and I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That right there is a thrust vector. But now I need to take into account the friction vector, which works in the opposite direction and brings us back uh, 3. 1, 2, 3. So our resultant vector is going to be uh, this one here. I'm going to change colors to make it work. Here is our resultant vector is this. So the horizontal component is going to be equal to 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 newtons. Oops, huh. 500 newtons to the left and then the vertical component is caused by its weight and the vertical component is going to be 1, 2, 3, 400 newtons and now if I want to find the uh, resultant vector, I'm going to start at the beginning and finish at the ending. So what I'm going to get then is, uh, to find the, the, the net force, it's going to be the hypotenuse. So I have to say, let's see, this is 500 newtons squared. This is 400 squared. So what I'm going to say is the square root of 400 squared plus 500 squared. And I think it's going to equal 300, but we're going to take a look at that here. Well, I was super wrong there. Uh, so what it actually is is 640 newtons. 640 newtons and the direction is eh, kind of down to the left of the way I've got it drawn. Hey, that's our homework. Hope you enjoyed it.